Good afternoon, my name is uh, Minister Emmanuel Paul from Christ Baptist. Um, this afternoon, I would like to bring a topic uh, to your attention uh, about prayer. Uh, just before we start, um, let's have a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we come before you this afternoon uh, with this great opportunity uh, that you've given us where, Lord, in this world where People do not know where to go, but Lord, we still come, can, can come to you and pray in your name and call upon your name. Father, I thank you again for uh, this opportunity to stand here. I thank you, Lord, for the uh, Pastor Bogan and uh, the church as a whole. I thank you, Lord, for the leadership of this church. I thank you, Lord, for all the members one by one. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our lesson this afternoon is about prayer. Uh, it's about prayer during uh, the Lenten season. Um, one of the uh, passages of the Bible that uh, I'm going to use is Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to, through 13, which is a very familiar passage uh, to uh, most of us. Uh, this is where the disciple actually asked Jesus, can you please teach us how to pray? Um, the passage that we are about to use again is Matthew 6 9 and it reads after this matter therefore pray ye our Father which are in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come and thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This season that we're in, called the Lent season, uh, the Lenten season, uh, it is characterized as a season of denial. People deny themselves and deny certain things and enter into a uh, season of praying, a uh, season of praying between now until um, the crucifixion and, and the resurrection. So it, it's a season of the denial. Fat Tuesday come and uh, it showed people how to then fill themselves up and before that they can set themselves to empty themselves out again. But we know that the ultimate denier, Jesus Christ, gave up everything so you and I can have eternal life. He denied himself by doing the will of the Father. Prayer is always a way to communicate with God. Um, in 1 Samuel, we see uh, the story of Hannah. And um, I'll read 1 Samuel verse 8. I'll start with verse 8. So then uh, said Alkana, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why it is thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk, now Eli the priest sat open the seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was bitter, uh, she was in bitterness of soul and in prayer unto the Lord, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said unto the Lord of hosts, If thou will indeed look upon my affliction, and thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give thy handmaid a man child that I will give him to the Lord and all the days of his life and there shall be no razor come into his head. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spoke in her heart and her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long thou wilt be drunken? Put away thine wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of soulful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have put out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, but out of abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hither. Then Eli answered and said unto her, Go in peace, and the God of Israel granted thee thy petition, thou shalt hast asked of him. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went away and did eat, and the countenance was no more sad. 
and they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to the house of to Rama. And Elkanah knew Anna, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So prayer has always been an integral, integral part of the believer's life. Whether it's prayer for deliverance, like the children of Israel out of Egypt uh, in, in Genesis, or it's a prayer to bring down the walls of Jericho in Joshua 6, 1, uh, verse 1 through uh, 27, or to build the walls of Jerusalem in Nehemiah 1 and 4, uh, or a prayer of thanksgiving in Psalm 100. The book of Psalms has recorded prayers that God has inspired to the old saints. For example, in Psalm 61, he reads, Hear my cry, O God, attendeth to my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me, as a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covet of thy wing, Silla. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows, and thou hast given me the heritage of a host uh, that fear thy name. Thou will prolong the king's life, and is here as many generations, and he shall abide before God forever. O prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. Prayer, again, is not just, is an area that we Christian can clearly see that we have not mastered. Um, sometimes you, you look at people that worship different deity and it seems like they devoted more time in prayer than we Christian. So prayer is definitely something that we can, every single one of us has an opportunity to pray more and do more. But thank God for the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter eight, verse six, it reads, likewise the spirits also help us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for, should we pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself make intercession for us with groaning which cannot be ordered. I am acutely aware that people feel guilty about this topic. I'm quickly aware that people feel guilty about the topic of prayer because they do not engage in prayer enough. But one thing's for sure, through prayer, yes, through prayer, we can always make changes in our lives when something is not right. As we're listening this, to this lesson, we can have a new beginning. This is what God is all about. We can always have a new beginning. As I was preparing this lesson myself, I quickly realized how much time that I invested watching TV, watching the news, that I could use this time to engage in prayer. So you're not alone, and I don't want you to feel guilty the fact that you have not engaged yourself in prayer like you should. But we definitely have opportunity, and we can always start. Many people refer to this time period, again, as the Lenten season, a time where most people try to deny themselves of something. So on Fat, Fat Tuesday, or the French word will say Mardi Gras, anything goes. Anything goes. I have was uh, old enough to uh, witness Mardi Gras in, in Haiti uh, and, and in a different place. And I can tell you, I, I, I clearly see what goes on in this atmosphere. But the next day is Ash Wednesday. And um, we want to give us some stuff, uh, just like some of us start eating from uh, Thanksgiving and on, and on. But when the first of the year come, we then have this New Year's diet resolution. I have no idea why, but I often wonder why every diet start on a, on a Sunday. Instead, I, I meant to say every diet start in a Monday. Lent should be a time of soul searching, a time of reflection, a taking an inventory of our own lives. That's what Lent should be, an inventory of our lives. Giving of stuff, it's all right, but just to give stuff, to give of stuff, is not what Lent should be about. You're giving up TV, you're giving up food, alcohol, drugs, or some kind of worldly pleasure. Yeah, that's good. But we should think about the inward part. What can we do in these 40 days to get ourselves from the business as usual 
to a more spirit-filled life. A time, it is a time to give up sins in our life. It is a time to give up the hypocrisy, acting like a Christian in the outside, but acting self-centered in the inside. The purpose of Lent should be a time of discipline to clean up those things which may clutter one's life or hinder us from the right relationship with God. Lent is also a time for people to experience or reflect, or reflect on the suffering of Jesus Christ, why this great God came down here on earth to give his life for you and for me. That should be a great reflection. It should be a time that we look at our sinful habits, our sinful attitude. It should be a time that we stand before God and ask for forgiveness and the washing away of our sins uh, uh, to empower us to turn away from our sinful past. It should be a time to live a life dedicated to his glory. It should be a time that our attitude reflects in the joy and knowing that our sins are forgiven. These 40 days should be a time to look deep in our heart thinking about our life and how we've been living this life in Christ. Instead of TV and a beer or a Daniel fast or no meat, no movie, no candy, no restaurant, what sin are we giving up this Lenten season? Or what sin are we giving up for the rest of our lives? Our Christian life goes way beyond the outward. Just remember what the Bible says in Matthew 15, 8. Jesus said, these people draw near unto me with their mouth, but honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So we don't want to just give up some stuff for a moment. We turn back to it while our heart is still away from God. If there's something that we want to give up this Lenten season, let's examine our heart and let examine our heart and also let us bring our heart into Jesus. We must make the change inwardly. Lent needs to be a time to pursue where we have not gone yet in our spiritual life, a journey to a new dimension in God. That's what this season should be for us. Paul in Philippians chapter uh, 3 verse 10 reads, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection the fellowship of his suffering being made comfortable unto his death. Comfortable unto his death. Here we see Paul give up everything. Everything that Paul ever known or habit and things that he've learned, he've learned. He gave them all up so he may know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 was led into the wilderness for 40 days of fasting and praying. There were no food, there were no drink, there were no TV there. But it was a time between him and the Father. As we prepare, are we, as we prepare a wilderness season inwardly, are we prepared for a wilderness season inwardly? Prayer was required for instruction and comfort. Prayer used as preparation for all things, especially for the will of God. There is several type of prayers. There is petition, there is intercession, thanksgiving, praise, blessing, and adoration. Jesus' communication with the Father was very important. Every time Jesus is about to do something big, like selecting the twelve, he always get in that form of communication with the Father, which was prayer. During prayer, God can and will minister to us. If we stand still, we can follow the model prayer that Jesus taught in Matthew 6, 9 and 13 that we read at the very beginning. We can follow that model because we know that as we pray that prayer, God will hear us and he will come to us and he will set us the way we need to be. How can we focus during these 40 days of Lent? Well, when we are focused we're free to do God's will. We are strengthened. We put Christ at the forefront of everything. There is unity in the spirit. But when we are not focused, things tend to be, uh, to go wrong. Things tend to be blurry. 
So without my glasses, I can't see much of anything. But with my glasses with a smudge on it, it makes things even worse. I cannot focus right. There's missteps. There's missing target. I will fall back or what we call backsliding and I missed out in blessings also. So if we don't have the right focus, then we also start to drift away. Um, in the Christian life, there is not someone that get up one day and say, I, for most people, for most Christians, they don't get up and say, I don't want to follow Jesus anymore. I'm done with this Christianity thing. For most people, it started with a little bit of a drifting away, a little bit of a walking away, a little bit of less Sunday school, a little bit of less prayer, a little bit of not coming into the house of the Lord, a little bit of not talking to people like-minded. And before you know it, just like a boat, you find yourself out of place you never think you can be. This Lenten season, let open our ears to hear from God. Are you hearing from God? Are you, are you staying in that stillness of voice? Are you keeping silence? You stop talking instead, you let you listening to God? Are you creating some sort of discipline? Uh, when to read the Bible, whether it's the morning for some, noon for some, or at night? Are you creating that kind of discipline? This Latin season, we all should have a personal time with God. Cut out the noise and the distraction, because there's a lot of it right now. And we all want to have an answer for every situation God, that is going on around us. But we know a lot of time we're left with more questions than we have answers. This is a season for total dependence on God. Sometimes we are simply unwilling to pray. Sometimes we are simply unwilling to pray. As Jesus in the garden, as the disciple, couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? Could you imagine this guy? If there's one thing the disciple could have asked prayer for, he would have been to strengthen that they can stay with Jesus in the garden. They could have asked for that, but instead they fell asleep. We see Jesus in these words, uh, in these words, Jesus asked again, after they fall asleep a second time, would you man keep watch with me? So in this Lenten season, we need to ask God for the right attitude. We need to ask him to cleanse ourselves from the inward part, not just giving up stuff, not just stop going certain places, but let's bring our heart to the table so God can examine our heart. We see that in John chapter 17, 11, these words spoke Jesus as he lifted up his eyes to the heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son may also glorify thee. As thou has, as you, as thou has given him power over all flesh, and as he shall give eternal life, as many as thou hast given him. And as this is the life, eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth, I have finished the work that which has given me. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self and with thine own glory. I, I have with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto men with that givest me on, of the world. Thy there were, and thy givest them to me, and they have kept them thy word. Now they have known that all thing whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou have given me, and they have received them, and have known them. Surely I have come out from thee, and they have believed that, that this sent me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are dying. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I'm glorifying in them. And now, I am no more in this world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that there may be one as we are. This was the ultimate prayer coming from the ultimate denier. 
the one that deny himself, the one that give up everything so we can have the right standing with the Father. John 17 is the perfect example of well done. We're all looking forward to hear this word, well done. Here Jesus is telling the Father, he has accomplished everything that he sent him down here to do. This was the ultimate prayer from the ultimate denier again. I heard the story of a bunch of animals who was coming to a breakfast. And then each of them promised to bring something. And the chicken said, I'll bring the eggs. And the pig said, I will bring the bacon. So the pig did the ultimate sacrifice because giving up eggs and giving up bacon, that means the pig had to die in order for bacon to be at the table. What is it that we're really sacrificing? Are we just giving up something so we can go back to it? Or are we really, really sacrificing our heart before the Lord? Lenten season need to be in the right focus. It needs to be a dependence on Jesus Christ. The Bible says on Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request may be known unto God. Pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Depend on God for issue we cannot resolve ourselves. Yes, we have psychiatrists, we have psychologists, we have doctors, we have science. These are great, as we can see. But at times, none of those things matter. God always have the final word. God is calling us to communicate with him and learn what it means to be loved, to be redeemed, to be sanctified, to be empowered by a loving God. If there is a time that you and I need to pray, it is now. Because the world that we're living, we can clearly see how it's going. Coming into this church this afternoon for this message or this lesson, it felt strange. And a lot of time when we pray and we're in different meetings, we say, well, when we're coming back. Sometime I said, what if we don't come back? But God still give us this opportunity where through prayer, we can still, still go out. Through prayer, we can still go out and gain those people who doesn't know him in the pardon of the sin. Bring these people into this kingdom that he's building. Because one day you and I, is not going to be here anymore. But we want our family members, we want our friends, we want the people that we know. The people that we don't even know, but people that are in our own neighborhood, we want them to come to Jesus. And that can only be done through prayer, that God somehow will soften the heart of the next person. They'll come to know him as Lord and Savior. Let this season be a new beginning for you and a new beginning for me. Because again, as I said earlier, we have not mastered prayer. We have not mastered prayer. Every single one of us has an opportunity to do better when it comes to praying. Every single one of us can spend more time with Jesus. Every single one of us can have a little talk with Jesus. Don't feel guilty, but let's take this season, called the Lenten season, as a time for a new beginning. God bless you until we meet again. Amen. Father, we thank you for another opportunity that you give us that we can come before you. Thank you, Lord, for this rem reminder that the way to communicate with you is through prayer. The way that you would always talk to us is through prayer and through your words. Father, as we're starting this season, Lord, May this season not be just a ritual. May this season not be just a time where we just put things on the side just for the sake of doing it. May this season not just be a show, just someone know that, well, I'm on this fast or I'm on this diet or I'm giving up something this time because uh, 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 the crucifixion is coming and the resurrection is coming, so let me show that I'm doing something for Jesus. But Lord, may this time be a reminder that we need to align our heart with yours. May this time be a reminder, Lord, that we need to come to know you even more. Because as time getting hard, as time getting more difficult, 
as things come in our way that we never seen and expected before, Lord, help us to stay in prayer that we can have that perfect communication with you. Lord, I pray that the words that came out, Lord, someone will hear them, starting with me, Lord, will not feel guilty, but Lord, we feel a zeal to engage in prayer and reading of your word. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.